Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, a little bit, a little bit warm air now that summertime has finally arrived in uh, the Finger Lakes of New York now that we're into September. But it is a lovely, uh, it is a Wednesday morning. I think that is September 6, 2023. So I announced a few days ago that Sister Sandy was going to, uh, that she had laid claim to this story uh, from the honest sorcerer, sometimes known as the enigmatic bee, who all right, also writes for medium.com. She said she was going to cover this story Tuesday night, but apparently Sister Sandy did not uh, cover this story last night, and I think that Sandy, if I understand correctly, is an at an Alice Cooper concert today. I had no idea that Alice Cooper was still alive. So uh, since Sandy is off partying at an Alice Cooper concert, I am going uh, to uh, take over uh, for her. I was going to cover this story simply because it was so hilarious by some clueless doomer chick named Susie Curley. Humanity is heading for collective suicide. But there's still a, but there is still a, there is still a, still a, <laughs> anyway, thank you, Susie, for telling us that humanity is heading for collective suicide, but she just won't let it go. But I don't think we have to worry about any hopium showing up in this fellow bee, the honest sorcerer. And thank you, brother. I think it's brother. Brother B. Stop using the word sustainability for God's sake. Ugh, Jesus, this is really nothing new in here. This is just kind of, uh, unless you're fairly new down the Doomer rabbit hole, this is kind of a, a little refresher course and why we are so doomed 101. Take it away, B, the honest sorcerer. For millions of years, humans were part of nature for millions of years. Uh, I'm, I'm already, have we been around for millions of years? Uh, I guess some form of us, clueless moron, naked ape, been around for millions, plural of years. Uh, we were part of nature. We were born in the wild, lived in the wild, died in the wild. We ate what we found, drank the waters of rivers and streams, breathed air purified by trees, just like any other mammalian species on Earth, sounding a, a lot like the uh, Don Quixote famous acorn soliloquy, my favorite soliloquy in, uh, in Don Quixote where he was speaking before the Gotthards. The false belief that we have somehow moved above and beyond that, thanks to our ingenuity, is just a fantasy. Or, or rather, pure, unadulterated, I love to see the word unadulterated, hogwash. This whole term hogwash, uh, where did the term hogwash come from? <coughs> we still eat plants and animals, feeding on grass and seeds. We still drink the waters of rivers and streams. We still breathe air purified by trees. The only difference is that today there is a massive blob of buildings roads, machines, mines, and supermarkets. Now, 
weighing more than all living things combined placed between us and nature. All technology did in its narrowest technical sense is that it has enabled us to extract raw materials, you know, from nature, clear-cut forests, harvest fish and food beyond all sustainable levels. Sustainable, sustainability in its original sense means an ability for something to go on unabated forever or at least long enough not to matter. All I am writing about on this blog since its inception is that nothing, not a single thing, we humans do and call civilization today can go on for much longer, for much too long, let alone forever. Extracting resources, especially by mining, destroys ecosystems, takes a lot of energy and precious fresh water, poisons rivers and the soil, and ultimately depletes the very resource it is going after. It is a self-destructing and thus self-limiting activity. Mining is, by definition, unsustainable. Now the problem is that everything we call civilization today, from buildings to roads, from agriculture to distributing food, from machines to electricity, starts with extracting resources from the ground. No exceptions. Recycling and the popular myth we call the circular economy, the popular myth we call the circular economy, are both pseudonyms to an inherently imperfect and wasteful process. There is no 100% perfect recycling. Sorry, that is physically impossible. Some portion of our material resources, no matter how carefully we husband them, will always be left behind as mixed waste. No technology is perfect, and as the little losses add up over time, endless recycling eventually would lead to the depletion of our stock of materials in a few centuries, if not decades. Yes, the word you are searching for in your head to characterize recycling or the circular economy is that both are unsustainable. There you go. I want you to think, and then he quotes uh, Mike Meyer and Alan Urban, which I've which I've gone over this rant before. That which is unsustainable will not be sustained, and that which cannot be sustained will eventually stop, otherwise known as the collapse of everything. I want you to think long and hard about the statements above and the two paragraphs preceding them. Really? Now, after thinking it through, can you sincerely call any modern technology sustainable? Solar panels 
nuclear power plants or electric vehicles? Any exceptions? How can we call renewable energy renewable then when all of its devices, solar panels, wind turbines, electric gear, etc., are made from non renewable materials? Let's face it, there is nothing renewable about renewable energy. It is just another futile exercise in turning finite stocks of minerals into stuff powering the mining of yet another batch of finite materials. Until we turn everything into toxic waste and there is nothing left for us to mine or recycle or recycle, renewable energy is an unsustainable, self-defeating proposition just like burning fossil fuels. It is a mere buy me some time exercise, another kick of the can into the abyss. The illusion of abundance provided by finite stocks of fossil fuels and minerals has made us ignorant about what true sustainability is, but as soon as growth in extraction grinds to a screeching halt, then slowly reverses in the coming decade, singular, we will immediately wake up to its realities. Toward the middle of this century, depending on how fast we progress everything we do today, from large-scale agriculture to manufacturing and cities, the very essence of the word civilization will start to dwindle and fade away. Yes, if you are middle-aged or younger, that means in your lifetime, a massive climate change and a mass extinction we have unleashed as part of the process will just further complicate all this. Do you think so? Will further complicate your life. Mm -hmm. In theory, upon realizing all this, we could rein back our energy use, degrow the economy. You know, this myth of degrowth, which is as big of a joke as the myth of the circular economy, which is a big a joke as the myth of recycling, which is a big a joke as the myth of renewable energy. <clears throat> yes, we could rein back our energy use, degrow the economy, teach farming skills to large masses of the population, breed draft animals, and equip every household with low-tech gear aiding them during a transition back to a more simpler life. Yet, yes, that could include solar panels, but not in order to feed massive amounts of power back into the grid, but as part of a small-scale direct current home grid equipped with acid batteries and DC equipment, such a low-tech network could provide refrigeration and basic services like running a washing machine or a small water pump circulating water between a solar heater and a hot water tank. But 
we don't do any of this and not at scale for sure, that would be an attack on our personal freedom. So we will keep denying en masse that our predicament even exists until it becomes way too late to start adapting to its consequences. A rapid and uncontrollable simplification, and I love that uh, euphemism, a rapid and uncontrollable simplification now thus seems to be inevitable as a mad scramble for energy and rapidly depleting resources fully unfolds in front of our eyes. Depending on how fast modern civilization keeps crumbling away, yes, it is already failing, so don't be surprised should you find yourself under the rubble one day. The few survivors might even find themselves in relative abundance again. There will be a lot of fine material to build homes, low-tech equipment, and much more from. They might even see an ecotechnic future emerging from the ruins of modernity with all its clever heat engines, hydroponic farms, walkable cities, and all the rest. Presuming there will be a living ecosystem to inhabit, you know, these people who, the few survivors who make it through the bottleneck, they could even enjoy a pleasant life. As stated how above, however, the recycling and repurposing of materials left behind by industrial civilization cannot go on forever, not even for a radically smaller and ecologically minded society. Oh, and forget about mining, all the easy to get stuff will be long gone by then. What will be left would require immense fleets of fossil fueled machines to extract and smelt, not something any of our descendants will have after the fall of modernity. So one day, even this relative abundance will give way to scarcities again, leading to yet another round of collapse. After a few rinse and repeat cycles, in a matter of centuries or a millennia later, we will be back to hunting, gathering, and small-scale subsistence farming, farming again with very little technology left for us to use. And I'm, and I'm a little unclear with what these people will be hunting. If you have heard the Bill Gady uh, theory of the sixth mass extinction, because the collapse of global industrial civilization will include and pretty much require the hunting and literal eating of every single one of our fellow earthlings we share this planet with bigger than a mouse. There will be nothing left to hunt because before this one goes in its final gasp, we are going to hunt to extinction every one of our fellow earthlings, which begs the question, what are we going to throw into the stew pot after we have thrown into the stew pot every one of our fellow earthlings. So I don't know what he's talking about, what fellow earthlings we're going to be hunting. Anyway, if I ever interview this man, 
I will ask him. We might have houses built from wood, adobe, or similar truly renewable materials, as well as tools made from bones, leather, and the like, but very few, if any, metal objects or machines more complex than a water mill. If you want to imagine the future, many millennia from now, forget Star Trek. Instead, imagine a Neolithic village. <clears throat> I'm sorry to say it, it simply cannot happen any other way. We cannot recreate either rich mineral reserves nor fossil fuels, which has enabled this unprecedented bonanza in the past couple of centuries. Neither can we deserve discover a third hemisphere. There is none. If, after all of this, you still believe that fusion or whatever wonder technology of the day will save us, then I urge you to start filing patents on how to re reproduce those from twigs, grass, and cow manure. Folks, there is no energy without minerals and there are no minerals without energy. Once these two inputs are gone, there is no way to get them back. Even us humans cannot risk, cannot trick entropy. We can only trick ourselves. We cannot restore nature or stick all that pollution and CO2 under the ground either. Yes, Earth will most probably heal herself, just like it did after the cosmic impact putting an end to the age of dinosaurs. But don't bet on it that it will happen anytime sooner than several hundred thousand years. So, familiarize yourself with how people lived centuries ago and be prepared to see our distant past becoming our future. Visit open-air museums showcasing how people lived a long time ago. Imagine how would you adopt to a radically different life. Becoming mentally prepared and fully cognizant about our predicament is already half the work. In the meantime, enjoy all what this civilization can offer. In the meantime, get out there and enjoy all what this civilization can offer. Live your life to the fullest, and while being aware of its evanescence, keep also in mind what Tom Murphy on his fine blog, Do the Math, likes to say. Quote, We are not civilization. Humanity is a bigger and more versatile concept than the current mode we have stumbled onto and become trapped within, close quote. Or, as Wes Jackson would put it, think of modern humans as a, quote, species out of context, close quote. Civilized is not the way we were meant to live. We were born to live wild, free, and happy, collecting nuts and berries, not promotions and bitcoins. Once modernity is gone, due to the simple reasons stated above, 
No hard feelings. It's just physics and geology. After all, we will become truly sustainable again. We will learn how to live off the land, on the land, or perish. As simple as that. Thank you, the enigmatic bee, the honest sorcerer. And uh, bee is getting me hungry for some blackberry cobbler. So I need to get out there and gather some blackberries. It is a bumper year for blackberries. And uh, get out there and make a blackberry cobbler. While I still can, I highly encourage you to get out there and gather your own blackberries. While you still can. And you're going to go gather some chippies while you still can. My guys. Alright, it is a fine day in the collapse. Blackberries, here I come. Oh my gosh.